welcome back to our journey to Antarctica. Wait, we're now in Antarctica. In this episode, we'll not only take you to see thousands of penguins, but we'll also take you on a dive below the surface in Seaboard Pursuit's C7300 Submersible. This is Kenny and JJ go all the way to the Antarctica Peninsula. If you haven't been following our journey and are interested in finding out how we got to this point, you can go back and watch parts one and parts two to see how we got here, including what it was like to cross the Drake Passage. We arrived to the peninsula a half day early, so it seemed pretty fitting that our first stop would be Half Moon Island. You are assigned to a color group that will be your color group for disembarkation through the entire cruise. After getting geared up, we hopped into the Zodiac and we started our short journey to the island. Our first steps on Antarctica. We were so excited to be greeted by our first chin strap penguin as we got on the island, not knowing we would see plenty more. If you're wondering what do you do when you make a landing, we'll really just kind of walk around and explore. The expedition team will mark paths showing you where to go so you don't get lost. Usually the paths go to something that they want you to see, like this seal, which is really nice because I would have totally missed that seal thinking it was a rock. This whale jawbone was also marked off. Again, I probably would have missed it thinking that was a piece of driftwood or something. And of course, there's plenty of time for photo ops. But the penguins are so cute that we actually spent most of our time at all of our stops on our trip just watching them and seeing how they live. After about an hour, our excursion was over and it was time to head back to the ship. So we got in the Zodiac and got back to the ship and started cleaning off. So one thing that you'll learn is that there's all these procedures to clean off your gear before and after to prevent the spreading of diseases. In true expedition cruising fashion, we didn't know where we were going until the night before. For our second day in Antarctica, we found out that we would be traveling overnight to get to Hope Bay. Our morning in Hope Bay started off with our submersible experience. It just so happened to be that we were eating breakfast and we looked out the window and we saw the actual submersible launching from its garage. After breakfast, we got on our Zodiac and went over to the submersible where we were greeted by our pilot. And then down the hatch we go. As you can see, it's a little bit tight coming down the hatch and trying to get to your seat. You've got to be comfortable with getting up close and personal to your fellow passengers. From the very beginning, it was so cool seeing all the ice on the surface. After we got settled in, our pilot started the safety briefing. Uh, just to cover a few safety features with you, this here has got a rebreather. Put that on in a case of emergency where we, we lack breathable atmosphere. For the three of you, it's under your middle seat there. I say put your rebreather on, put it on. Basically, you pull the yellow tag, find a mask with a hood over it, put the mask in your face, pull the hood over your head, and then pull the pin, and that will activate it. And if I do pass out, so what do you see when you go down in a submersible in Antarctica? Well, for us, we didn't see much of anything. We saw some starfish and some snails, but overall, this is more about the experience in going down in a sub in Antarctica. Is it worth it? Well, this is just something that you would have to decide for yourself if it's worth doing based on its $1,000 price tag. This was one of John's dreams, so he was really happy. So never everyone does, they always twist us. <laughs> Before going back up, I got to drive this up. Form at 1.5 meters, permission to send bubbles. Bubbles are released so that the Zodiacs above can know where we are. And then right before you know it, we're already back up to the surface. Getting out of the sub was much easier than getting in. 
and once we all got in and got settled, we realized we had a little visitor swimming around to check us out. Next up, we go back to the ship so we can have a quick lunch and then we have another hour-long Zodiac tour around Hope Bay. Penguins were jumping all around us. One even tried to jump into the boat. There was also lots of glacier ice floating around. You can tell that's glacier ice because it's clear. Expedition guides would pick up any of the smaller pieces of glacier ice to take them back to the ship. I don't know if they were joking or not, but one of them said that they take it back so that bartenders can use them on the ship. We spent the next hour just cruising around and watching some really cute penguins. You would think after all of this, our day would be over, but it was just starting. So we went back and got in the hot tub while our boat actually moved to a new location and we went on a new adventure. Until then, we got a great view of the local Argentinian base while we sat in our hot tub and sipped on champagne. For the late afternoon, we relocated just around the corner to Brown Bluff, where we got to experience thousands of penguins. I'm not joking. If you look at this picture in the far background, those are all penguins. Brown Bluff is the home to one of the largest Adelie penguin colonies in the Antarctic Peninsula. One thing that I haven't mentioned is that there is an attempt to try to keep the bird flu from hitting Antarctica, which means lots of precautions have to be taken, including staying 15 feet away from the penguins. Now, in some cases, the penguins walk up on you and you can't really help it, so you try to step back to still give them their distance. Also, you're not allowed to kneel or sit on the ground and you can't put any equipment on the ground. So you can't bring a tripod to set up to take pictures. Ah. Brown Bluff itself is a geologist's dream. I'm not a geologist, but we had a couple of geologists on our expedition team and they were very excited to make this landing. We wrapped up our landing on Brown Bluff just in time because ice started moving in pretty quickly. That night we found out about our next landing. Our expedition team originally wanted to go to the Weddell Sea, but because of all the sea ice, instead we had to change our course. We would need to travel through the night and part of the morning to get to Coverville Island. What's so special about Coverville Island is that it's an iceberg graveyard. We arrived in Coverville Island around lunchtime. Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Natasha from your expedition team. I've just heard back from Luki on the shore side and the conditions are absolutely beautiful for our landing today here in Coverville Island. Ladies and gentlemen, we are with that shortly ready to begin our disembarkation procedures. As we took our Zodiac to the island, our expedition guide gave us a lot of information about what makes an iceberg grounded, which makes an iceberg graveyard. To get to this incredible view of the iceberg graveyard, you have to hike up this huge hill. Not to mention that you're also hiking in about a foot of snow. This was also our first time experiencing penguin mud. And if you don't know what penguin mud is, all of that red looking stuff on the ground, that's actually penguin poo. The best way I can describe the smell, it's like a porter potty that's filled with fish that's been sitting out in the sun for a very long time. By the time we got to the top of the hike, John and I were both sweating. So in this picture, I don't know if I was more happy that I was at the top of the hike or that I was finally away from the penguin poo smell. At the top of the hike, we got to experience an avalanche, which was cool, but also a little scary. Going back down was actually a little bit easier, mostly because I fell a few times and slid, so much for not touching the ground. There was also a couple of traffic jams, 
We have to wait for all the penguins to cross on the penguin highway, that's what their little paths are called, before we could cross ourselves. It's pretty incredible that they travel up and down these steep hills just to get to their nests. I felt like I could really relate to this penguin because this is exactly what I looked like coming down that steep hill. Going back to the ship, we once again got to go through the iceberg graveyard. Back on the ship, I thought this day couldn't get any better, and then we spotted humpback whales. I was so excited to get the whale tail and also get to see the humpback whale feeding. And just a few minutes later, we were notified that there were orcas right off the bow of the ship. It seemed like we saw everything we came to Antarctica to see in the first three days. We couldn't even imagine what's next to come. But don't worry, there's lots more. <laughs>